So I've been playing guitar for a long time and I've accumulated quite a few instruments here. This is my current um, selection from my uh, guitar closet. I'm going to go through some of these in this video and um, open these cases up, show you guys what I've got, talk about the stories behind some of my favorites, and uh, maybe I'll plug a couple of them in and play a little bit and show you what they sound like. And maybe we'll see if we can get that one right there to work. It's been a while. Anyway, stick around. All right, so first up, one of my favorites. Uh, this is a Regal um, parlor guitar from 1940-something, um, best I can tell. Um, I've tried to uh, look it up. If anybody has any information about this, you know, please let me know in the comments. Um, but uh, this is a cool guitar. I think it still has the original dust on it. Um, just kidding about that. Um, some of my instruments are a little dusty. I just moved to a new place and I have yet to kind of go through the full, the full cleanup. But uh, you know, this thing. <laughs> Good sound to it. I mean, it's, you know, it's a parlor guitar, so it's kind of a three-quarter size, maybe not completely in tune. But anyway, um, this is a cool one. I got this uh, at uh, Forrest York's Guitar Shop in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, um, several years ago, and um, it's in really good shape. It's got a few like beginning to have some little stress cracks here on the back, and and um, you know, it may have had a couple of little repairs here on this bridge. This doesn't really look. Like the original bridge like obviously but um but yeah i love this guitar it sounds great and i've got a few other videos on the channel of uh, me playing this um out um in nature and playing a few songs on it so uh, you guys should check those out too um anyway let's move on to the next one so in a previous video on my channel the uh jazz master uh comparison between the classic vibe squire and the um uh, ventura uh, 60s i mentioned that i've had a lot of uh, inexpensive um, Squire type guitars in the past, a lot of experience with them, and this is one of them. This is a Squire Tele. Um, this is like a the butterscotch uh, affinity model that they put out a few years ago, and I think this was like a hundred bucks or something. And it's super light, which I really really liked about it. And I replaced the pickups with some, you know, much more expensive um, pickups. I'm not really exactly sure what they are uh, right off, but they were some like you know, Nashville hot wound Telecaster or something. And I changed the pit guard out to be a tortoise shell because I really wanted it to be like a Prince uh, Telecaster. And um, obviously it's it's filthy and it's still slack detuned from my, my recent move. Um, but I need to get this thing cleaned up and uh, uh, put some new strings on it and um, give this thing a shot again because uh, I really enjoyed playing this. I played this on stage for many years. It's great having uh, Squire guitars as long as they play well on stage because if something happens to them they fall off a stand uh, it's not that big of a deal you know you can uh, they're usually pretty tough this one's taken many many falls um, but anyway that's kind of my, my Prince copy uh, telly but also my my Nashville twanger I suppose so anyway there you go so another uh, inexpensive guitar that I bought purely for travel and for stage uh, is this uh, Gretsch uh, Electromatic. So what that is, Electromatic? Um, you know, it, it's a little heavy. It's a solid body Gretsch, um, but it really, you know, has these the pickups, the whatever they are, TV Jones style Gretsch, Electro something or other pickups, whatever they're called. But they kind of have that sound. Uh, they're really kind of a good rock guitar. And, um, you know, this guitar is like 150 bucks or 200 bucks tops probably. Depends on where you get it or you can get one used. And it plays great. Um, I bought this because we were doing some traveling with a band I play in and I needed to go to Canada and um, some other places and I needed a, a cheap guitar that I could take in a gig bag that was likely replaceable at a local guitar center if I needed to. Um, and uh, you know this this was okay. this this plays, you know it, it played good enough for those handful of shows that we did. It was a very rock uh, oriented set. And, um, you know, this one fell off the stand a couple of times, face flat right before we played, and I just picked it up and it was still in tune. And, um, you know, so there's something to be said for uh, inexpensive, tough guitars like this. But anyway, that's a uh, Gretsch uh, Electromatic. Um, pretty cool. I really like it. 
All right, this uh, next guitar is one that I have actually never seen one exactly like. This was a uh, prototype guitar for um, a Nashville NAMM show, I believe, uh, by Jay, Jay Terser. Can you see that there? Um, and um, yeah, I know all of my, my guitars are very, very dusty. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, if I get uh, 100 likes on this video, I will um, clean all of them, I promise, and oil all of the necks and get all of them very nice. So uh, everybody make sure you watch all the way to the end of this one and give it a like and subscribe if you like this type of stuff or any other other stuff on my channel. Um, anyway, this is a cool um, resonator, yeah, resonator guitar. Um, it's got this biscuit cone in here and um, it's slack tuned currently once again from the move, but I'll tune this one up in a few minutes and maybe play a little bit on it. It has a great sound, finger picked. Um, and the pickups don't sound bad. The bridge is very, you know, um, uh, you know, tinny kind of bridge sounding obviously but this lipstick and the neck really has a great sound to it and um you can get some jazzy tones out of it um you know considering it's a, a resonator guitar um i played this one on stage a few times um and it it looks great obviously because it has the big shiny biscuit and so when the lights hit it um you know it reflects off into the crowd um but anyway it uh it's set in a window at nam in the sun uh, and so it kind of naturally yellowed through all of this so it looks like it's really old although this is probably like a, a 90s um, but anyway Jay Terser um, they make several other guitars but I've never actually seen this particular one in any other pictures online but if you know anything about it leave me a comment let me know something more about it I would love to learn more so this is my Epiphone ES295 special edition um, Scotty Moore model, I believe it is, and, um, see the Epiphone there. This one has, uh, custom, or sorry, replacement Gibson tuners and replacement, uh, Gibson P90s. Um, I think everything else on it is pretty well stock. Um, saw this thing hanging in, uh, Forrest York's guitar store. It was his own personal guitar that he had fixed up and, decided to get rid of from his large collection and I was in there with my wife and it was our anniversary and she really liked it and said uh, you should buy that and I said I should buy that and so I did and um, it has the nickname of C-3PO or a Star Wars family so um, this is uh, this is C-3PO I'll definitely plug this one in and play this one in just a little bit uh, once again that is a ES-295 I believe it says yep Sounds fantastic, especially with those uh, different P90 pickups. Very, very hot. Cool. All right, so every guitarist has to have a Stratocaster of some kind. Um, this is mine. This is my oldest guitar. Um, I have worked on it a lot. Um, I've changed the pick guard and the pickups multiple times. Um, the only thing really original, um, you know, is the neck. Uh, and the, uh, I guess the tuners are probably original but this is a um, Fender Japan Stratocaster um, when I was a senior in high school I could have bought a, a class ring as lots of my classmates were doing but I chose to take the money and go to the local music store and buy a guitar anyway because I thought that would last longer and uh, uh, funny story they all had their class rings stolen at something else some event they were at they put them in the lockers and somebody stole them unfortunately but I still have my guitar so you know, I think I came out the winner on that one. Um, but I almost never play this anymore. It's it's mostly just uh, memories. And if I really needed a Strat sound, I would pull it out and tune it up. But uh, I have so many other guitars, it doesn't get a whole lot of play. But anyway, very sentimental to me. I've had it for a long time. 20 plus years, probably. Fender Stratocaster. There you go. The Epiphone Casino. This is a... Um, 90s model uh, of a phone casino. Very light. Obviously, the pickguard, I removed it almost immediately. Um, this is my number one guitar, my favorite guitar in my history. In fact, I have the serial number and the F hole from this tattooed on my arm. Um, such a memory when uh, I was in the, the a band in the 
uh, mid 90s or so, uh, when we made our second record, we had a budget to buy some instruments. And um, so this was mine. So I got to go down to the Epiphone factory in Nashville on Massman Drive and they had a rack of these, different colors, and I played them and I picked this one. This was my favorite one. And um, I've played it on most every album that I've been on since then. I've played it, um, you know, at numerous shows. I've played it on TV. Um, this is my, this is my uh, guitar that I would potentially run back into a burning house to grab. I'm just kidding on that one. I would let the insurance take care of it, but at any rate, it may not be super valuable on the marketplace, but it's super valuable to me. Anyway, there you go. Epiphone Casino. Guess I should show my old school strap buttons here. Got my Spider-Man face, my Run DMC button. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hopefully that's coming through on the camera. But anyway. Love having some buttons on my strap there. All right, yes, the Fender Jazzmaster Ventera. I've already done a couple of videos on this guitar on my channel. So, um, you know, if you're interested in more detail review, um, you can see that. I just did a one year later review uh, on this guitar. This is my current favorite guitar, um, not to take anything away from the Epiphone Casino, but, um, you know, this is the one I'm currently playing the most. Uh, Fender Jazzmaster Ventura. Uh, medium gauge strings on this one. Most people may think that's a little heavy, but um, you know I kind of like it. It, it uh, adds a little more chunk to the guitar, and I don't play a lot of lead on this. It's mostly rhythm and, and jazz type stuff. I mean, I don't know if this is a guitar or not, but it has six strings. It's a Pirellas Banjotar Kitjo. I don't know, whatever you would call this, but it has six strings and a, uh, a snare head like a banjo. And uh, it's currently only has four strings on it and it's tuned up like a ukulele, but it has at time had uh, six strings on it. This one has a small crack in the headstock here. And so uh, I hesitate to tune it all the way up to full concert pitch. I usually do like a step flat or something just for the sake of it. But you know, that's a pretty cool looking little instrument there. Um, played this a lot on the, uh, with the Tender Innards band, uh, kind of a bluegrass country band. Maybe I'll put a link in the description for some of that uh, music. I think there's some videos out on YouTube. But anyway, weird instrument. And this is a uh, Dan Electro baritone guitar. I'm not really uh, doing my basses or my um, slide guitars in this video. It's just normal six string guitars, but this one does have six strings. Um, Dan Electro baritone. Uh, I think I got this for 200 bucks used or something. It was uh, in the shop and I saw it week after week and, and uh, I was bringing one of my kids in there for their um, uh, music lessons or their band practice or something and I was like okay if that guitar is still there at the end of the month I'm gonna have to just go ahead and get it and uh, it was there and uh, so now I have a Dan Electro baritone this thing sounds really cool I've done a few tracks uh, for some YouTube videos with this um, kind of run through a semi distorted kind of swampy guitar uh, sound and uh, I'll probably do a video just about this one pretty soon I see that People like baritone guitars these days, and this one certainly has a, a unique sound to it with these lipstick pickups. So I'll maybe get my silver tone amp out and get this thing plugged in and uh, see, what, uh, see what we can do. Cool. Anyway, Den Electro Baritone. All right, so I guess uh, if you've stuck around, now you get to see this thing, this DG20. Um, there's been a few videos about these guitars um, out. Um, not a lot of them are working these days. I think this one is working when last I tried. Um, I'm going to see if I can um, get it plugged in and make some sounds come out and maybe I'll do a secondary video on that. Uh, it's missing a string. I think I may have a replacement string for this in a box somewhere I need to go through and dig. Um, I acquired this guitar from uh, the band Self and uh, it may actually technically not be mine. It may still be, be uh, Matt Mahaffey's, but at any rate, I have it, Matt. If you want it, let me know. I'll send it to you. But until then, I'm going to see if I can get it working. Uh, they used this on the uh, Gizmondry album that was a toy album. Um, anyway, DG20. Pretty crazy looking guitar. These are pretty cool sounding, but very difficult to play. Unless you just want to kind of do some power chords or single note stuff. Cool. Well, thanks for watching uh, my video about all my uh, guitars. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, leave me a comment if you have anything to say about any of these or if you have any questions or know some extra details that I might want to know that I didn't share in the video about some of these models. I'd love to hear it. Love to know. Um, got lots of great comments on my previous guitar videos. Anyway, hope
hope you enjoyed it. Give it, uh, give it a like, subscribe if you like. Have a good day.